and as well when you look at their teams Renzo having many different options of boosting his stats either the calm mind on top of Finney the swords dance from Lander Asterion or what we were really excited about nasty plot on Galarian Moltres. That was three exciting ways to kind of negate any stat drops that Fevzi can throw towards his end. Fevzi though has access to Reggie Steel, which if the Landorus and the Incineroar on Renzo's side of the field are removed is going to be able to do a lot. It's a very tough matchup for both these trainers. I think they both can match like the stat boosting attributes. Fevzi with the Landorus and the Registeel. Renzo with the Landorus and the Galarian Moltres, like you mentioned, Joe. It's all going to come down to board positioning. It's all going to come down to how they lead what Pokemon they prioritize playing, what Pokemon they prioritize going on the offensive. I think Renzo has to stick with that duo that's gotten him this far in the tournament, the Landorus and the Moltres, whereas Fevzi can choose to rely on the Blastoise if he thinks that would be advantageous. And given that otherwise it seems Renzo would struggle to damage the Blastoise, it might be time to go for it. Well, let's see if Fevzi goes for it as we go into game one here in the Woozles Loser Finals of Players' Cup 4 between Fevzi Uzcan and Renzo Navarro. You will have the Amoogus that was so pivotal for Renzo throughout its in his entire loser side run. We actually saw in multiple matches it was a really strong Pokemon next to Incineroar and then Fevzi with Thunderous and Incineroar as their opener. The Thunderous and the Incineroar are not the Pokemon that Renzo wanted to see staring down the Amoongus. Both of them can taunt. And as we saw in previous games, Amoongus wants to rely on those status moves on that Spore in order to put Pokemon to sleep. Immediately now from turn one, that is not going to be available to Renzo. To his benefit though, if he's able to find a way to knock out the Thunderous and the Incineroar. These are the only two Pokemon that Fevzi has that can shut down that part of the Amoongus. So keep it safe for later. Try and find that knockout early and clear the way for Amoongus like we saw him do in previous games. Renzo making a very smart decision to switch the Amoongus out in this position. You wouldn't want to get taunted. So Landorus will come into that slot. Fevzi's Incineroar will fake out the other one so there won't be an attack there. And this taunt is not the end of the world for Thunderous, even if it was going towards the Amoongus. Now you have stopped the Landorus from going for a potential sword stance for the next three turns. And we, we've seen just how devastating those swords dances can be from Landorus. Getting that taunt down honestly makes this turn a little bit easier for Fevzi. I think Renzo is going to have to decide, do I Dynamax or do I switch? If, Lan if Renzo decides to Dynamax, that means he's going to be relying on Max Airstreams, trying to get that speed control going, and this will give Fevzi an opportunity to adjust. If he switches, however, this is a great opportunity for uh, Fevzi to go for damage and, again, slowly start taking that lead. Thunders with a Thunderbolt into Incineroar, not doing too much damage, and then the parting shot from Fevzi's Incineroar will lower the attack and special attack on Amoongus' end. Not that it really matters too much, but more importantly, it will allow Fevzi to switch in one of his last two Pokemon, which we see here from his perspective, is the Lander Asterion and the Registeel. So, you know, that's what we see here in game one. Those are the four Pokemon that Fevzi thinks are the, the most pivotal to his success in this set. And Fevzi deciding that Registeel is the is the choice to bring in on this turn. And Incineroar taunts Thunder, so now Thunders can't go for, you know, Thunder Wave or Eerie Impulse or, or a taunt of its own. One thing that these trainers know that we don't know is how the Amoongus and the Registeel uh, fare in terms of their speeds. 
who's going to be moving first? Who's going to be moving second? We saw that Renzo is running a faster Amoongus. And if the Amoongus is indeed faster than the Registeel, having both of these Pokemon out on the field opposite each other is a really tough position for Febzy to be in. Now that the Thunderous has been taunted by the opposing Incineroar, it cannot stop the Amoongus from going to for spores. And we've seen Renzo just win games off of this Amoongus' ability to put Pokemon to sleep. Febzy forced to switch his Thunderous off the field to get rid of the taunt, and in comes Incineroar, intimidating Renzo's Pokemon. It's time to get boosting as Registeel will iron defense on this turn, boosting his defense by two stages. At this point, it is not too threatened by anything on Renzo's side that would stop it from iron defensing. So now Renzo, thanks to his own switch out here, is going to presumably bring the Landorus back in to this position to uh, threaten the both of these Pokemon weak to ground. But no, instead, oh. Renzo actually showing the Galarian Moltres as Amoongus puts Incineroar to sleep. So I like this adjustment actually thinking about it because Moltres doesn't care how many iron defense boosts you have when it's nasty plotting and hitting your special defense. It doesn't. And by also going for the Spore, not into Registeel, you know that the uh, Pokemon, if Febzy does decide to adjust to try and get that Taunt Pressure back, is going to be put to sleep. So even though the Registeel is faster than the Amoongus, that was something that I think both these trainers knew going into this game that we weren't, uh, we, we didn't know, unfortunately. Uh, we know that the Registeel can only do so much at this point in time. So even if it does get another iron defense in, Moltres will be able to deal damage through that and Amoongus will be able to put Registeel to sleep regardless. Renzo with a nasty plot out of Galarian Moltres, boosting its special attack by two stages. And now this plus two body <laughs> press into Moltres as a neutral attack. And it does like 60% to Moltres. That's how strong iron defense body press is as a combination. And now the Spore from Amoongus will put Registeel to sleep because it had already attacked this turn. That's actually beneficial for Renzo because that means next turn is Registeel's first turn of mandatory sleep. So you know you're not going to get hit by a body press next turn. The Thunderous, though, might threaten this Moltres. I think the Thunderous has to taunt the Amoongus this turn to be safe. So Moltres, if it can find a knockout in one turn against this Thunderous, should be safe to carry one Renzo through this game. But if Thunderous can land an attack here and pick up that knockout, that is going to be huge. Rage Powder from Amoongus going to redirect any attacks that were targeted towards Gloria and Moltres and go into the Amoongus instead. Max to Darkness with a one-hit KO into Thunderous. No threats of a Thunderbolt KO in response, obviously, because it was redirected away. But even if it wasn't, uh, this this Moltres is now ready to sweep in this position. With Amoongus next to it the whole time, you are, you're able to redirect those attacks with Rage Powder, and that's the best utility that Amoongus can provide, is by keeping his teammates safe by forcing Febzy to target Amoongus instead of the Dynamax Moltres. Forcing Febzy to also send that Landorus Therian back out. Had he sent out that Incineroar, it is asleep. Amoongus would have been free to go for Pollen Puff into the Moltres to heal it up. At least with the Landorus on the field, even if Febzy doesn't necessarily feel comfortable attacking, given just how scary that Moltres is right now, Amoongus will have to think twice about who it's going to target, if it's going to Rage Powder, or maybe even protect itself from a Max Airstream. Febzy will Dynamax Lander Asterion in this game. We saw that it clicked Protect, which is third, or we clicked, it clicked Max Guard, so that means on this first turn, Febzy is expecting an attack from Renzo towards the Landorus, and he doesn't want to take any damage because that Gloria Moltres really packs a very strong attack. Moltres thinking the same idea as Moltres will actually max guard as well. So they're matching each other here. No damage from either oh, Dynamax no. Pokemon. And Reggie Steel's body press goes into Galarian Moltres instead of Amoongus. And Spore oh. goes into Landorus there. That would have been crazy if Amoongus went to Spore Reggie Steel again, assuming it would wake up. That would have been crazy. But that was not to be a very exciting zero damage done on that turn. 
but talk about the possibilities for this turn. Since Amoongus wasn't able to put Registeel back to sleep, Fezzi has one opportunity to guarantee a KO this turn. Target the Moltres, target the Amoongus, even if the Amoongus redirects with Rage Powder, it is holding Focus Sash, it is still going to be active. So those two hits will knock it out if it doesn't redirect and instead it goes for a Spore, you know that the Moltres is going down. Amoongus with a Rage Powder yet again going to redirect this max airstream into it Although there is a likely chance that the airstream could have went forward anyway since it is super effective Renzo wants to ensure that that target hit Amoongus bringing it down to its focus sash So Amoongus hangs on at 1 HP. Did Registeel go for an attack? Did it go for an iron defense? The max darkness from Valerian oh. Moltres is not enough for a knockout. Almost enough with the nasty plot and berserk boost, but not enough. The the Landorus is able to recover that drop thanks to the white herb. Not as impactful as stopping the intimidate though. And Reggie Steel will body press to take out Amoongus's last HP remaining in this matchup. So uh, that was that was a very very close turn because Reggie Steel almost didn't get to knock out Amoongus. And if it hadn't gotten the opportunity to go for that knockout, it most likely, or it would be asleep, or the Landorus would be asleep, and that Moltres would be feeling so much better about this turn right now. The Landorus is going to be faster than the Moltres this turn, thanks to that max airstream. Dynamax has also expired, which means this Landorus uh, can target it safely, knowing that it won't be able to max guard away the damage. Fevzi still has to be careful here, as his Reggie Steel is not in a good position at all, thanks to the fact that Landorus on Renzo's side of the field can safely earthquake in front of it. But if Reggie Steel is faster than Moltres, after two max airstreams, which I think is something Fevzi should know after the amount of games he's played this team with. That can be your out. Deal damage to the Landorus, use Registeel to knock out the Moltres, and then worry about the Landorus again the next turn. Registeel on Fevzi's end will protect this turn, wants to stick around for another turn. Max airstream from Fevzi into Landorus on Renzo's and important to note that because the white herb was activated the previous turn from the max darkness dropping its stat that intimidate did stick from Landorus this time around so it was not able to uh to get rid of an intimidate which is the point of the white herb but fiery wrath from Gloria Moltres brings Landorus down to almost half of its HP gonna be helpful as this was Fevzi's last turn of Dynamax so now the Landorus comes back to normal size and just a, a regular super threatening Landorus a regular super threatening Landorus with access to Rock Slide. It's not the most accurate move, but if Fevzi is feeling lucky, Rock Slide to knock out the Moltres. Body Slam, or excuse me, not Body Slam. <laughs> Close enough, body press. Close yeah. enough, <laughs> close enough. It's going to be the body press to knock out that Landorus. That will bring things down to Incineroar versus his remaining Pokemon. It's a bit of a risky play and certainly not a risk that Fevzi has to go for, but the option is there and you know it must be so tempting to just try and get that win as quickly as possible. Fevzi not tempted in this position as instead he will switch the Landorus out into Incineroar wanting to get rid of that attack drop and Renzo saying that's a good idea. I think I'll copy it as he switches his Landorus into an Incineroar as well. Both of these trainers running similar Pokemon and they know how to use this play style so, so well. But a body press from Registeel into Moltres will be enough to knock it out. So now the Landorus on Renzo's end is going to have to come back in on the next turn. He is down to his final two Pokemon here in game one. Final two Pokemon in game one, the Incineroar and the Landorus. 
Meanwhile, this Reggie Steel just happy to stay on the field using leftovers to get its health back and really put it in a position where it can take this game. The opposing Incineroar is weak enough that a body press at this point should pick up the knockout, especially after that one iron defense. Registeel also free to target the opposing Landorus. Due to its clear body ability, it does not have to worry about being intimidated. It's still a very close game, and the fact that Fevzi's own Incineroar is asleep is not doing this Registeel any favors, but still, Fevzi is so close. I can imagine he is just waiting and trying to find that spot to bring him the win in this game one. Incineroar will switch out in place the landerus with another intimidate there is no way for renzo to to stop that intimidate it will be at minus one for now unless it wants to boost its own attack which oh. is what happens here so the intimidate the intimidate still helps because now landers is only at plus one instead of plus two which is very helpful for fevzi but in this spot Incineroar's Flare Blitz goes into Registeel's Protect. And remember when Registeel almost got knocked out, Gabby? Now it's back up into Yellow Health, so it's doing all right. It's doing all right, but a single Flare Blitz might still be enough to pick up that knockout. It's a very tough decision for Febzy to make. Do you target the Landorus now that it's at plus one attack and Earthquake can really deal a lot of damage? Or do you target the Incineroar and just hope that your Registeel's defenses are high enough that the Earthquake won't do enough damage to knock you out? Or maybe that the Landorus goes for a different move entirely. It's a very tough decision and it's all gonna come down to this turn. Body press from Registeel into Renzo, knocking out Incineroar, so no Flare Blitz. Don't have to worry about getting knocked out if you KO the big threat on that side. And oh Renzo with another sword stance, boosting <laughs> up to plus three attack on his Landorus. A very strong Pokemon if you can ever get an attack off. After this point, Rock Slide bringing it down to around 30% of its HP. And now, yeah, you're plus three, but you still can't really reliably hit Landorus and you need to Earthquake the Registeel, meaning the Landorus can just hit you again. It's a very scary Landorus, but the Registeel also is faster than the opposing Landorus. Neither of these Landorus has access to protect because they're running sword stance instead. So if body press is enough to pick up the knockout on that Landorus, Fevzi is going to take this game. And let's see body press going into Renzo's Landorus, taking it out and Fevzi Uzkan has successfully won game one here in the losers finals. One game away from moving on to the loser's side of Global Finals, trying to redeem himself from that winner's matchup against Leonardo and, you know, win the Players' Cup. So he's so close, he can taste it, but Renzo definitely does not want to give him that experience. He wants to be the one moving on to Loser's Finals, or to Global Finals, excuse me. No, but the interesting thing to keep in mind, too, is that both these trainers entered this game with the same amount of information and the experience of having played each other all the way back in round one of Global Finals. And it's for that reason that I think we're not going to see too many adjustments in this game, too. I think that Renzo brought the Pokemon that he felt were his highest odds of winning after reflecting on that matchup, after, you know, looking back, thinking what he could have done differently. So I am very curious curious to see how this game two is going to play out because it really did come down to who had what boosts when, who got those max airstreams to stick, and how the intimidates were used. And because of that, I think it's going to be the same Pokemon and it's just going to be as close as it was in that game one. Well, let's find out as we head on into game two here in the Losers Finals. Remember, Registeel had two speed boosts in that game, which actually was pretty crucial because it let it knock out Incineroar and be faster than Landorus and knock it out as well. So Fevzi leading with Incineroar Landorus for a double Intimidate on this end, but uh, Renzo does not have a Landorus. Instead, it is Amoongus and Incineroar on his side. 
And we see the Intimidates activate in order. Renzo's Incineroar moved first, which means there is a high, or excuse me, Febzy's Incineroar moved first, which means there is a high likelihood that Febzy's Incineroar will have its pick for how this turn will go out. The tough part is if you don't use Fake Out, the opposing Incineroar can flinch you and then the Amoongus can put you to sleep as neither of these Incineroar have have safety goggles or well Febzy's Incineroar at least doesn't have safety goggles so a very tough call to make turn one and I think you have to make this turn assuming that whatever isn't the Incineroar is going to be put to sleep this turn and try and find a way that you can make the best of the circumstances despite that this is a, a very difficult turn one because there are so oh. many options and not even including Amoongus switching out. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was thinking of the Spore and the Rage Powder or you know, protecting. Instead, Renzo decides to switch Amoongus out into Landers to get a second Intimidate off. So these are uh, four Pokemon that have been intimidated twice on the field <laughs> at this point. Uh, and now Febzy is going to negate that those two Intimidates by going for Sword Stance, increasing his attack again by two stages parting shot <laughs> from incineros it says drop that attack right back down buddy and i'm gonna switch out here so that i can potentially switch in again and intimidate you to get you back to minus two it it really shows how intimidate is like arguably it's up there with shadow tag and prankster it's arguably the best ability in vgc it allows you to immediately adjust your positioning and give Pokemon that otherwise would not stand a chance the option to go on the offense. Unfortunately for that Landorus on Febzy's side of the field, the one sword stance was not enough. He had to be able to mitigate three different attack drops in that turn. Um, or well, I guess actually it was enough because he did. He does have white herb on that Landorus, so it really only was recovering from minus two. But still, a very tough position to be in because just like in turn one, you still have the threat of the Amoongus and those spores just staring you down. Bevzy will Dynamax Landorus here on this turn it worked out well for him in the previous game not only from obviously strong attacks on coming out from landers but boosting the teammates there including the reggie steel that got those pivotal speed boosts in that game this time around though there is no dynamax out of renzo on this turn so they will not be matching for now febzy has more offensive output from his dynamax attacker renzo with the swords dance on his end and that is going to boost up that their attack by two stages but the max airstream into amoongus is not going to do too much thanks to protect that will only do a quarter of the damage it would have without it wouldn't have really mattered too much anyway if the amoongus isn't double targeted because it would just be brought down to its focus sash but it was double targeted so the protect was the correct play out of renzo there keeping his amoongus around what a tough position for both these trainers to be in though Pepsi finally has the speed advantage, having one max airstream up on the field against Renzo's Landorus. But there's only so much he can do at this point to maintain it. I think he wants to make a switch here. He wants to try and save some of these Intimidates for later, but he's, as a result, he needs to target that Amoongus. And I love how Renzo keeps switching it in and out here because he's really using the pressure that that Amoongus has to force Bevzi's hand. Incineroar switching into the Amoongus position with yet another Intimidate. So now that Renzo had used Sword Stance on the previous turn, he feels comfortable Dynamaxing Landorus. This will help a couple turns down the road because that means he will have one additional turn of Dynamax while Fev or after Fevzy's Dynamax ends, which could potentially be very important in a few turns. But for now, they will both be Dynamax and Max Airstream from Landorus on Fevzy's end. We'll go into Incinero doing some okay amount of damage, but those Intimidates are really starting to pile up. At this point, Fevzy's kind of just like a Max Airstream bot trying to get as fast as humanly possible. And a parting shot from Incineroar on Febzy's side will lower Renzo's attack, negating a little bit of the sword stance there. And Febzy's going to have to switch into either the Registeel or the Blastoise. 
And whatever Pokemon he switches in here is running the risk of taking a max airstream from that Landorus. So he has to be very careful about this. Reggie Steele was the decision for Fevzi, and so Max Airstream doesn't target it down. Instead, wow. hits Fevzi's Landers, which shows it is a two-hit KO, even with the Intimidate for, or the Parting Shot from earlier in the turn. That will be a pretty strong attack going into next turn. Now you have Landers on Fevzi's end, his last turn of Dynamax. Maybe you need to max guard to, to hang out, or you're, you could go for a max Airstream again to help Reggie Steele get super fast. It's a tough call because thanks to all the Intimidates that we've seen cycling in and out on the field, Febzi's Landorus is going to struggle to find damage this turn, whereas Renzo's Landorus is still in a relatively comfortable position. I think that Febzi has to pick the target of this attack, not thinking about it as how much damage can I do, but instead asking himself, do I want a speed boost on one of these Pokemon? Or do I want to otherwise try and reposition myself to take the advantage later? Reggie Steel switching out on Febzi's side into Incineroar, a common note at this point for anybody watching. You see Incineroar <laughs> switch in, you see it switch out, you see Lander is switching. This is how we play here. You got to take every precaution you can at this point in Losers Finals. You don't want to make a, a mistake like that, so you want to hurt their attacks as much as possible. Fevzi with a max airstream though into Incineroar, bringing it down pretty low, getting an additional speed boost. That means Registeel won't have those for future turns because he wasn't around for the max airstreams, and no longer will Landorus be around in future turns as Renzo is able to knock it out thanks to his next uh, max airstream there becoming super super fast as well on his end so that is a nice sign for renzo here that he was able to get rid of fevzi's dynamax attacker it's honestly incredible to me that you can have these teams of you know incineroar landorus and yet at the end of the day, even though both these trainers are aiming for the same sort of win condition, the same sort of positioning, the teams really do play different. Knowing that Fevzi has Registeel and Blastoise as his last two Pokemon, for example, it means that he's going to be playing this game completely differently than how Renzo is going to start playing once the Incineroar or the Landorus on his side of the field have been removed. For now, at least, the Landorus is in a perfect position to get one last attack in from that Dynamax. We've seen how much damage those Max Airstreams are doing. Also free to go for a Max Quake now into Fevzi's Incineroar, which would have the bonus of boosting his special defense in front of Blastoise as well. And that is exactly what Renzo opts for in this turn. Instead, the Max Quake oh. into Blastoise, though, bringing it down to 19 HP, almost enough for a one-hit KO. If it wasn't for all of those pesky Intimidates and uh, throughout the entire game, it would have been able to knock it out. But luckily for Fevzi, he is able to get Yawn onto Landorus there. So that means after his attack next turn, Landorus will be forced to, you know, be put to sleep in this position. So uh, you kind of traded your landers there saying, I want to get a lot of damage onto Blastoise at the cost of being put to sleep at the end of next turn. Renzo free to switch that Landorus around if he decides to. We know that there is the Amoongus plus one other Pokemon waiting in the back of his party. It's true that he'd be giving up the speed boost from the Max Airstream, but again, he's in a position now that Febzi's own Landorus has been removed from the field that he doesn't necessarily necessarily need them. Landorus is still going to naturally be faster than Blastoise, so if Landorus is truly key to your win condition, you can keep it safe. If there's something else you want to send in, well, Moltres is going to do a great time too. Absolutely, Moltres will be safe to switch into that position as the uh, the, <laughs> the berry activating on Incineroar's end shows that yep, shows it's the Shuka Berry, which will help it take the Earthquake much better. And Blastoise protected, so that's why it didn't take any damage there. Now you have Flare Blitz from Incineroar targeting down the Moltres, which was supposed to go towards that super low HP 
Incinero, but instead will actually help oh. Moltres out because of the Berserk ability, giving it a boost to its special attack. And now Landorus, you've done your job. It's time to take a little nap and let Moltres take care of the rest. Poor Blastoise though, going to be forced off the field as it is slower than Moltres and Moltres certainly more than capable of dealing that remaining damage thanks to a Fiery Wrath. Incineroar switching into that sleeping Landorus's position on the field for yet another Intimidate. We'll have access to Fake Out next turn as well. So this low health Blastoise does switch out. Registeel taking its place is at full HP. And Moltres, no nasty plot. Instead, just a protect out of Galarian Moltres because the Flare Blitz was targeting that position. And that would, you know, that would be very difficult for Renzo in this spot because uh, another, from what we saw from the first one, another Flare Blitz would most likely knock it out. Thebsy's still on the back foot, though, as he's trying to find a way that he can deal damage, knowing that the Moltres is so powerful and such a huge threat already. Blastoise switching into the Incineroar position, still at 19 HP, so it's very, very low. Incineroar with a fake out into the Blastoise slot. Can it do 19? No, it does 18! Blastoise living on one HP. That is a huge survive because even if it can't get an attack the next turn, it at least is forcing a target in that direction instead of a double target into the, the Registeel there. Uh, so Blastoise not very effective in this matchup, uh, you know, came in, took a lot of damage. Now we've got fake out on the switch and then it's just at one HP. It is, but that actually might have not gone to Febzi's plan as had Blastoise been knocked out, he would have his Incineroar back on the field with access to fake out. He does force Renzo's Moltres to go for Fiery Wrath to ensure the double target and to ensure that Incineroar is able to attack the Registeel as it plans, but still a fake out here might have been the plan all along. Protect in this turn and the fiery wrath will keep Blastoise around for one more turn so even though it has one hp fevzi still has a plan for it in this matchup fiery wrath does not flinch registeel though and he is able to use it to iron defense to boost his defense by two stages and taunt Aww. luckily for luckily for registeel he was able to get the body press off on this turn because now that it was taunted it's not going to be able to do it on future turns but now that you're plus two in your defense you're okay with uh, with being taunted, so now you can start body pressing. You have to start body pressing, and you have to start body pressing with the Moltres. You are certainly worried about that Incineroar on the opposing side of the field finding a critical hit with that Flare Blitz to knock you out, but the Moltres is going to be a guaranteed three-hit knockout at this point from Fiery Wrath, so you have to take care of it as quickly as possible. All four of Renzo's Pokemon are still sticking around in this battle. And the Fiery Wrath brings both of Febzi's Pokemon down very, very low. Body press though, targeting Galarian Moltres is going to be enough to take it down. But that allows Renzo to attack with his Incineroar. So that will be a Flare Blitz targeting down the uh, the Registeel, which obviously at any point at this any attack at this point would be enough to take down the Registeel. So Febzi is down to just his Incineroar and his one oh. HP Blastoise. Oh no, this poor Blastoise. It's, I think it's really gonna struggle at this point in time to find anything it can accomplish. Fortunately, Renzo does send in that Amoongus rather than the Incineroar, most likely trying to take the threat of a fake out from Fevzi's own Incineroar. But with these Pokemon at such low health, you have to wonder, is Renzo going to find the opportunity to bring this to a game three and keep his tournament going? That's definitely the question at this point because Renzo being in such a strong spot, you wanna force game three. You don't wanna have a, a repeat of what happened earlier on in the bracket where Fevzi actually sent you down to the loser's bracket and you've been on this in incredible run at this point all the way through and you wouldn't want to have it end at the hands that sent you down there to begin with. So Renzo deciding that this is not the moment to give in instead 
he is going to play this out and is in a really strong spot to win this game and force game three uh, with the Landorus switching in for an Intimidate. He's still asleep though, so he's a very intimidating sleeping Pokemon in that aspect. Still gets the oh, no. attack drop. <laughs> Ice Beam though, on to oh, the switch in. Landorus didn't even know what happened. It was asleep the whole time, but it ate an Ice Beam. Fevzy getting rewarded for clicking that slot there, and Landorus goes down. Amoongus does protect, though, and now that's one less Pokemon that Fevzy has to deal with. Fake Out, though, is back on the field for Renzo. Can flinch either the Blastoise or the Incineroar. Amoongus, the Focus Sash is gone, but still effectively able to pick up either of these knockouts with the pollen puff so even though fevzy made a fantastic read to knock out that landorus this game is not over yet renzo has the opportunity to try and flinch one of these pokemon possibly even knock it out with the damage that fake out will do given that these pokemon are at such low health he also has the opportunity to just forego that entirely and on top of all of that we're running down to the wire in this game there is Last so choice. much on the line Blastoise with so much on the line, protecting Fake Out doesn't target it though. Instead, Aww. Incineroar takes down Incineroar to Renzo's benefit, and this Pollen Puff will obviously be enough to do the one HP needed in following turns. And Renzo Navarro has found himself in a position to make game three in the losers' finals in this matchup and try to move on to global finals from a from game one looking very strong for Fevzi. I would say Renzo was in a, a pretty strong position for most of game two and is going to get the win yeah renzo was in a strong position pepsi found a way to bring it back but with that last play calling the fake out to target the blastoise and not the incineroar that that was it that was how renzo secured his path to game three here in loser finals again if you forgot, because it's been a pretty stressful morning, the winner of this next game will be moving on to the grand finals to face off against Leonardo Bononomi. So everything is on the line. This is it. You don't get any more opportunities to adjust. You don't get any more opportunities to hone in your game plan against this matchup. It's all on the line right here, right now. And this is really all we can ask for, Gabby. Having this last game of Losers Finals come down to a game three, there really is nothing better than that in Pokemon. The excitement, the the suspense, it's it's honestly, it's sometimes it's too much to handle. It's too exciting. Oh yeah, but I don't think we should keep people waiting anymore. Let's jump into this game three and let's see who will be moving on, who will be going home here in the final game of the loser's bracket. The winner moves on to face Leonard Bononomi in grand finals. The loser gets to watch along with us, which I think sounds like a pretty nice prize, <laughs> consolation prize in that sense. Fevzi and Renzo. Renzo has Incineroar and Mungus as his lead, and then Fevzi leading with Thunderous and Incineroar. Once again, we're hearkening back to game one of this set where both the Incineroar and the Thunderous on Fevzi's side of the field threatened this Amoongus. Not so much to knock it out, but to taunt it, to disrupt it, to ensure that Renzo isn't able to rely on Spore Protect and Rage Powder like he has throughout the entirety of his loser's bracket run all the way from the beginning till now. It's a very 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 tough spot for renzo to be in because even if you do decide to adjust you decide to switch in the moltres or the landorus you're looking at that possibility of that pokemon being taunted which means you can't boost your stats like it's been doing so well for you so far amoongus not switching out like it did in game one instead this time just a protect fake out goes into the galarian moltres switching so that's not going to matter and taunt from the Thunderous will go into the Protect. So uh, Amoongus still just like the previous turn is very threatened by both of Fevzi's Pokemon. It is, 
and the Moltres next to it, if anything, is more like Renzo saying, look, you can use your Thunderous to taunt my Amoongus, but if you do, Moltres is going to nasty plot, and you know how much trouble that has caused for you so far in these games. It's a Rage very tempting target. Rage Powder, though, from Amoongus will be able to get this taunt in its direction. I think Thunderous was going towards it anyway, so it won't matter too much. But what it does, the Rage Powder does, is it lets Glorian Moltres use Nasty Plot without the risk of being attacked at all this turn. Now Febzy will parting shot with his Incineroar, lowering his attacks, but more importantly, getting this switch priority into whatever Febzy wants in the back. We see that those two Pokemon are Landorus and Registeel, just like we've seen all throughout this set, Gabby. Uh, those are the Pokemon that are really going, he's gonna need to use well if he wants to win this set. Amoongus being taunted means that this is the perfect opportunity for either of these two Pokemon to take the field. If you send in the Registeel, you will have the opportunity to iron defense. You don't have to worry about being put to sleep, but the nasty plot boosted Max Darkness or Fiery Wrath is certainly going to hurt. By sending in the Landorus in a very healthy state, you are ensuring that you can threaten this Moltres to the best of your ability. You can Thunderbolt, you can Max Airstream, you can uh, maybe even Thunder Wave it if you want to take a bit of a slower start to this game and ensure that you have the best possible setup to not only knock out the Moltres, handle the Amoongus slash Incineroar, but also handle the Lander Asterion, which given how these games have gone, you know must be lurking in the back of Renzo's party. There was definitely a moment as we see Febzy, you know, wavering back and forth on what to do. There was a potential moment where it was Dynamax Thunderous in that spot going for a Max Lightning into Moltres, but Febzy going down to the wire with two seconds remaining before clicking their moves decides against it. Instead, Amoongus will switch out into Incineroar to have a nice intimidate towards Febzy's Pokemon, but thanks to the white herb uh, from that we've seen help Febzy throughout the entire tournament here, throughout all of Global Finals, the white herb is negating Intimidate, so he's back up to neutral attack, and now is time for Landorus to really shine. That Dynamax form has done so well for Landorus, for Febzy, for Renzo, for many trainers throughout this tournament. Will it be the Pokemon that brings Febzy back up into the winner's side of the bracket into the grand finals? That's what we're going to have to find out here as Renzo deciding to Dynamax as well, choosing Galarian Moltres, the Pokemon that was so strong for in back-to-back -back sets yesterday, went for Nasty Plot Boost and then Dynamax and won both of those sets convincingly 2-0. So at this point, Renzo, there is no better Pokemon to choose as your Dynamaxer in this scenario than Galarian Moltres. The attack though goes into Max Guard, so Febzy's first turn is wasted into Max Guard and Thunderbolt from the Thunderous into Incineroar not doing too much damage. But it does a little bit of chip, which may make or break knockouts moving forwards, given how much both these trainers like to rely on cycling Intimidates in and out. Going into this turn, I like the max guard from that Moltres. I think acknowledging that Renzo's strategy really is central around the boosted Moltres at this point in time. And using that to buy a couple more turns, a couple more Intimidates to slowly weaken the attacking power of Bevzi's Landorus. Landorus switching in there as Renzo decides Max Darkness is the play onto Thunderous. Not enough for a one hit KO though. Bring it down very, very low, down to around 12% or 12 HP there. It will be enough though, however, for Thunderous to recover up just a little bit. Not enough to take another Max Darkness, <laughs> but will help out a little bit thanks to the Citrus Berry. And then now Landorus with a Max Stream into Renzo's Landorus. Gonna boost the speed on both of Febzy's Pokemon there. But uh, because of the White Herb from earlier, uh, that means that the Max Darkness is going to stick on to Landorus this time around. 
and now you can go for a potential max darkness again into the Moltres slot, or excuse me, from Moltres into the Landorus. And that's going to deal a ton of damage. So going into this turn, Fevzi has to consider if Landorus is not bulky enough to take this attack, which it, it's tough. It's a tough call to say at this point. What Pokemon do I want next to Landorus? What Pokemon do I want to take advantage of the final Dynamax boost I have access to in this set? It looks like it's time for Registeel to get another speed boost. That's definitely what Registeel wants to see is this max Airstream will go into Renzo's Landorus. Not be enough for a knockout though, but importantly, gets a speed boost onto both of Febzy's Pokemon. Swords Dance from Renzo is gonna boost that attack all the way up for Landers, making it super, super strong, but might not be enough since it's such low HP at this point. Max Airstream into Registeel is resisted, but that shows the power of a Nasty Plot boost as it's able to bring Registeel to just around half of its HP remaining and get a nice little speed boost for itself. Ensuring that the Registeel won't be able to outspeed the Galarian Moltres or the Landorus on Renzo's side of the field, which is going to be important given how much damage Body Press can do when this Registeel is given the opportunity to go for uh, max, go for iron defenses. It's it's taken damage. It certainly is not necessarily guaranteed a uh, iron defense this turn, especially when you consider that this Landorus can safely go for an earthquake standing next to the Moltres. And that earthquake is going to be its best option to attack this Registeel. If you're in Renzo's position, I think you don't go for the Earthquake, though, just because you know that it's on the top of Febzi's mind. And if you make that prediction, if you take that risk, it might not pay off for you. Landers switching out into Incineroar for Febzi's end, so that's going to get a new, fresh Intimidator, while the other one goes back into the back of the party waiting to switch in again. Registeel will protect though on Febzi's end so he doesn't want to take a Fiery Wrath or an Earthquake, which is what Renzo goes for. The Earthquake will not connect onto Registeel. Moltres is a flying type obviously, so that won't connect either. It will hit Incineroar, but thanks to the Shukaberry, only does half of Incineroar's health there instead of being a potential knockout. The Life Orb doesn't take down Landorus though. That would have been a little crazy of a move if Life Orb knocked itself out there, but will be around for one more turn. And Fiery Wrath from Moltres will bring Incineroar down very, very low. Still on the field though, and still able to access Fake Out, which will do enough damage to stop Landorus from attacking for the remainder of this set, if that's what Febzi decides to go for. Knowing though that this Landorus is only one attack away from getting knocked out by its own life or recoil damage changes how you play this turn. I think you have to let Landorus go down on its own accord and start worrying about this Moltres. The Intimidate on that Landorus should have weakened its attack enough so that Registeel is not in as dire of a position as it was in the previous turn. And this Moltres, though, still has that nasty plot, still free to go on the offense, and is really the scarier of these two scary Pokemon. Fake out into Moltres, so that will stop a Fiery Wrath, but this is Earthquake is enough to knock out both Registeel and Incineroar on Febzi's end there. So as Landorus knocks itself out from Life Orb Recoil, that's definitely a trade Renzo will take because you took out one of your own Pokemon to get rid of two of Febzi's. And the Moltres, again, is still in a great position to keep utilizing the special attack boosts and Fiery Wrath to deal consistent damage to Febzi's last two Pokemon in the game. These two genies, Landorus and Therian, they're no stranger to being side by side on the field like this but it's such a tough spot for them. The Landorus no longer has access to White Herb, which means it's going to start off immediately with its attack weakened. It might not even be able to go for a sword stance because the Incineroar can flinch it. And you know that Fiery Wrath from the Moltres is going to do enough damage to Landorus to knock it out in two turns, to the Thunderous to knock it out this turn. So it's, so there comes the prediction. If 
if Incineroar fakes out the Landorus, you have to have your Thunderous target the Moltres. If Incineroar targets down the Thunderous, you have to go for a Sword Stance so that you can pick up the KO the next turn. It's a very close game. And Renzo just keeping calm and relying on the power of this Moltres like he's done throughout the loser's bracket. Fake out goes into Thunderous, so no Thunderbolt into Moltres. Instead, Fiery Wrath will take out Thunderous and bring down Landorus really low at this spot. So you have the chance of a Fiery Wrath flinch. There is no flinch, but Incineroar avoids Rock Slide. Rock Slide will go oh. onto Weakness Policy, or excuse me, onto Moltres there and activate the Weakness Policy, making the next attack even stronger at this point. And because of the fake out, because of Incineroar stopping Thunderous, is stopping the threat that would put put out Moltres in its position. N Renzo is in a three to <laughs> one spot here and going to move on to the global finals. Normally we say as commentators where there is a rock slide, there is a way, but unfortunately for this Landorus, Moltres has that utility in the Fiery Wrath. It's going to be faster. And on top of all of that, single target damage is going to ensure the KO this turn. Renzo with the Fiery Wrath into Landorus. Fevzi's last stand, Landorus goes down, and Renzo Navarro keeps Latin America's hopes alive and will move on to Global Finals.